let me demonstrate how we can calculate the buoyant force that is acting on an object when it is immersed in water. Now firstly, we are taking this particular object, as you can see, and we are weighing it in air. Now over here, the weight in air, that is when the object is in air, is 10 newtons, as you can see from the scale directly. Now what is done is, this object is immersed in water while still connected to the weight. So now it is slowly immersed in water and as you can see inside water the reading decreases and becomes 6 Newton. So obviously there seems to be some sort of a loss in weight. Now why do you think that there is a loss in weight occurring? Obviously weight is a force that acts in the downward direction and since there is a decrease in that weight once it is immersed in water obviously there has to be some sort of an upward force which is causing the net downward force to decrease. So this particular upward force is known as the buoyant force. And how can you calculate the buoyant force? The buoyant force is nothing but the difference in between the weight of the object in air and the weight of the object in water. So in this case, the loss in weight of the object in water is equal to 10 Newton minus 6 Newton, which is equal to 4 Newton. And that is the buoyant force. Now let us demonstrate this with the help of a simple example. And now let us try to relate how this buoyant force can be related to the weight. So in this animation we are going to find that an overflow jar has been used. Initially the overflow jar is kept filled to a certain point where it is just about to overflow. Now what happens is the particular object under consideration is immersed in the jar and overflow takes place and water fills up the spout. Now over here the spout is connected with or the spout is blocked with a cork. The cork ensures that water does not flow out of the jar. On the other hand an empty bucket is weighed using another scale. Now as you can see the weight of the empty bucket is 2 Newton and the weight of the solid in water is 6 Newton. Now let us see what happens when this water is allowed to flow into the bucket. The bucket is brought in after weighing and the water is allowed to flow into the bucket. And the bucket filled with water is weighed again. The weight now comes out to be equal to 6 Newton with the water. So what can we say? We can say that weight of displaced water is equal to 6 Newton that is bucket plus water minus 2 Newton that is only bucket. So weight of the filled bucket minus weight of empty bucket gives me the weight of water that has filled up the bucket. Now in the previous case we saw that the loss in weight of this particular solid when weighed in air and weighed in water was 4 Newton. Why? Because when weighed in air the weight was 10 Newton. And when weighed in water, as you can see, the weight is 6 Newton. So the loss in weight was equal to 4 Newton. And in this case, we find that the weight of displaced water is also equal to 4 Newton. So this leads us to a very important result. That is, weight of water that is displaced by the object is equal to loss in weight of the object when placed inside water. And this is a very important result that we come up with. How does this help us? Let us find out. So we move to the relative density formula of an object. How is the relative density found? The relative density is simply equal to the density of the object divided by the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. It is important to remember that the density of water is always considered at 4 degrees Celsius. So the relative density is simply given by the ratio in between density of the object and density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. Now let us see that we are considering a fixed volume of the object and the same volume of water. What happens in that case? In that case we consider mass. Mass of a certain volume of object divided by mass of same volume of water. So when we are considering the same volume of both the object and the water, 
we are eliminating a variable that is volume because we know that density is equal to mass upon volume so normally both of these would have been variables but we are considering same volume of both the object and water so effectively we are removing one variable so we can consider only mass so now we write mass of the object divided by mass of equal volume of water we have eliminated the variable volume so if i multiply g both on the numerator and the denominator that is acceleration due to gravity i will get mass of the object into g on the numerator divided by mass of an equal volume of water into g in the denominator what does that give me that gives me weight of the object divided by weight of an equal volume of water weight of an equal volume of water so i get the result weight of the object divided by weight of an equal volume of water as the relative density of the object for given volume of both the object as well as water the same volume so this leads us to the experiment that archimedes had performed archimedes had said that when an object is wholly immersed in a liquid the volume of the liquid displaced is equal to volume of the object immersed so in other words when a particular object is placed inside a liquid the liquid that is displaced or the volume of it is equal to the volume of the object that had been immersed so this leads us to back to the formula for relative density weight of the object divided by weight of an equal volume of water now how can i rewrite this this can be rewritten as weight of the object divided by weight of water displaced by the object why because when i am placing an object inside water i am basically displacing an equal volume of water so i consider weight of water displaced by the object now previously we have found out that weight of water displaced by the object can be related to the loss in weight of the body that is the object in water what was that the loss in weight is equal to the weight of water displaced so how can i write this again i write this as weight of the object divided by loss in weight of the object in water now loss in weight of the object in water is nothing but weight of the object in air minus weight of the object in water thus i get relative density as weight of the object in air divided by weight of object in air minus weight of object in water and this gives me the relative density and this will help me to calculate the relative density of any object so now let us find out how i can calculate the relative density of a solid that is more dense as compared to water so now we consider a solid that is denser than water and we move on to experimentally determine its relative density so first we weigh the solid in air so let's say the weight of the solid is equal to w1 next we immerse the solid in water obviously the weight decreases and there is a loss in weight let us call the weight in water of the solid is w2 so when the solid is in air its weight is w1 and when the weight is measured in water it is w2 so now we can easily calculate what the loss in weight is we can calculate the loss in weight as w1 minus w2 and since w1 is the weight of object in air and w2 is the weight of object in water we write relative density as w1 that is weight of object in air divided by loss in weight once placed in water that is equal to w1 minus w2 so this can easily give us the relative density of a solid that is denser than water 
So now let us do a very simple problem in order to find out the relative density of an object that is denser than solid. A small numerical problem. It has been given to us that a solid weighs 50 Newton in air. So firstly I have this information that W1 weight in air is equal to 50 Newton and 38 Newton when immersed in water. So what does this mean? W2 that is weight when immersed in water is equal to 38 Newton. Now how can we find out the relative density of the solid? Relative density of the solid Rd is equal to W1 that is weight in air divided by W1 minus W2 that is loss in weight of the solid when placed in water. So I simply put the values W1 is equal to 50. So I write 50. Again 50 minus W2 that is 38. So I write 38. 50 minus 38 is 12. So I get the result as 50 divided by 12. I can simplify this by cancelling out the common factor that is 2. So I further rewrite this as 25 upon 6. So now what do I get? If I simplify this fraction, I will find that it roughly corresponds to a value of 4.2. And 4.2 is the relative density of the solid that we are considering.